Hey everybody, welcome to the first martial arts history. This video series will be going through all the different martial arts of the world. I hope y'all are as excited as I as I am for this series. Um, to, so let's just jump right into it. So the first martial art we'll be looking at is known as Wing Chun. Uh, the video breakdown will roughly go about origin, principles, and then their techniques. And moving on to any weapons if they have any. And we'll finish out with famous practitioners. So let's start with the origin of Wing Chun. Wing Chun was originally uh, created by Wu Mui. Wu Mui was actually a master of Shaolin martial arts, Wudong martial arts, and Yuji Quan. Wu Mui was also the creator of many martial arts styles, including Dragon Style, White Crane, Five Pattern Hung Quan, uh, her own personal Wu Mei Pai, and Wing Chun Quan. Although with Wing Chun Quan, it is a little different. For, it is a little different than her other creations. She created Wing Chun while escaping the destruction of the Henan Monastery by the Qing military. While escaping, she observed a battle between a snake and a crane. She would later teach Yim Wing Chun these fu the fundamental movements of the Shaolin system that would evolve to become what we know now as Wing Chun. See, uh, Wu, Mei, see Wu Mui actually uh, only adapted movements. She did not actually. She did not uh, perfect the style to what it is known as today, although she is greatly respected for for and in some circles is considered the true uh, creator instead of Yim Wing Chun. Yim Wing Chun has a few variations on her story, although all of them do say that she was taught by Wu Mui. Uh, the reason Yim Wing Chun was known for her beauty and for selling tofu. A local warlord sought to bully uh, Wing Yim into a uh, marriage, so Wu Mui taught her to defend herself using the motions of the Shaolin system and the motion and the actions from the crane and the snake's fight. Her husband uh, Luong Bak Chao decided to name the style after her, calling it Wing Chun Quan, meaning Wing Chun Fist. For much of uh, Yim Wing Chun's life, she would actually practice Wing Chun and help it get to more of the form that we know now today. Wing Chun traveled through a few different hands, including the Red Boat Opera Troupe. Now, something important to understand is that y Wing Chun did not experience its big popular surge in, uh, until Ip Man came into the scene in Foshan. Before that, it was a relatively low-key martial art that not many people knew of, and even few are practiced. Uh, not much is known about the Red Boat Opera Troupe, except that they were, uh, except that they were instrumental in up in the uprising against the Qing Dynasty. While Wing Chun Quan was in their possession, however, a Shaolin monk noticed that the rowers on the boat had good muscles for martial arts and decided to teach them staff techniques in order to cultivate this talent. These staff techniques that were taught by the monk were adapted into the Wing Chun system, instead of being part of the original foundation of it. Okay, we'll get into more detail why we know it was adapted and not uh, part of the original foundation uh, later on in the video, though. So that kind of wraps up our origin story for Wing Chun. So let's move into the principal tenets. Wing Chun focuses on these principal tenets of softness, fluidity, precision, practicality, and adaptability. Wing Chun, in its first phase, is a self-defense martial art. It focuses on smarter rather than harder because it's first two, which makes more sense since its first two practitioners were females meaning that muscular strength was not something that they would be naturally blessed with and would have to train even harder to develop because of this instead it, mo it moves with the ability to absorb damage through relaxation and chain techniques together with practical fluidity some of the techniques uh, let's get into the techniques because this will make uh, the, the tenants for Wing Chun more applicable. Wing Chun does not actually utilize a large array of stances. Rather, instead, it's most noted for its initial stance being the goat clamping stance. This is actually kind of interesting since most Kung Fu martial arts and just most martial arts in general will start with the horse stance as a strong, stable stance that is good for conditioning the body as well. But Wing Chun prefers to use the goat clamping stance because it provides a better balance for them as well as it creates a very strong center line, which we'll get into detail in just a moment. But the other better aspect about 
the goat clamping stance actually comes in its maneuverability in the style as it allows for very powerful forward linear and side motions rather than having to adjust rather than having to adjust foot position completely uh, through using the horse stance now Wing Chun's center line is very important in that it creates a very tight close strong defensive ability with this it really does create some it creates a stance that is hard to beat now the other benefits of the scent of a strong center line includes with their forward motion and lateral motions they're actually able to interfere with the enemy center line with little difficulty on their part as well as when they do perform one of their famous punches it is able to transfer force more effectively because it does not have to come from an off balanced point now Wing Chun's punches are what it's really known for more heavily than anything else the punches of Wing Chun follow the straightest path which means that most people most people will know like from movies such as Ip Man or Wing Chun or even uh, some some of the films that Donnie Yen has been in that they will notice that he will perform uh, Wing Chun style strikes with good reason because it follows the straightest path uh, front punches usually work the best for this and Wing Chun is no except and Wing Chun's method of firing the front, front punch off is actually the cracking whip method M mainly that it keeps full relaxation on the body concentrating with the soft force at first and then once it makes contact tensing the muscle to release to release the force inward to the opponent and then relaxing before any before any force is de delivered back this follows well with Newton's laws and that it actually bends the law of for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction because through this method of strike and then relaxation there becomes a limited amount of energy that can be transmitted back to the body leaving more energy to damage the opponent this combined well with the fact is that many of Wing Chun's punches are actually ambidextrous meaning that you can strike left right left right is within quick succession with and little pre and little dif difficulty. Wing Chun's punches also facilitate elbow defense, in that it will use in that for defensive techniques and posture of this form, it actually utilizes everything from the elbow to the forearm instead, and it actually concentrates on cutting and rediverting power. Also, going back to the goat clamping stance for the punch. I'd like to tie these things together with the center line saying and stating that Wing Chun uses a t a vertical knuckle strikes rather than parallel knuckle strikes. With vertical knuckle strikes, it works better due to their center line balance and that it can deliver force very effectively and efficiently without losing any extra, without uh, surrendering the arm to many grappling techniques. Moving on to the Wing Chun's kicking techniques now, Wing Chun utilizes uh, only low line and mid line kicks. Some Wing Chun practitioners do choose to learn high line techniques, but it actually, but Wing Chun as itself is actually a contrast to most northern martial arts, in that much, most northern martial arts are noted for their high line kicks. Wing Chun instead concentrates, again as a self defense martial art at its base, on low and mid line. Mid line kicks are slightly more rare though. As that they are more for is that there's a purpose if you see a Wing Chun practitioner shoot a midline kick, as low line kicks are their bread and butter. The reasons for this include the reasonable balance that can be kept while firing off these kicks, as well as the ability to interrupt the opponent's balance. You see, when Wing Chun kicks are performed, they actually serve the purpose to advance and strike at the same time. Meaning that even if a kick is even if a kick is performed, you have to be very careful against it, as that it can actually just be a step that they wanted to disguise. And because they can disguise, and because of the strong nature of the center line provided by the by the goat clamping stance, when these kicks are performed, the, the balance of the Wing Chun user is actually not interrupted severely, and in fact can actually interrupt the opponent's balance more. Going into Wing Chun's other famous note would actually be their grappling. Wing Chun grappling is relatively, it's more, it's complex to practice, but relatively simple to explain in my opinion. Uh, one of the best parts about it is that its grappling exists to desert, divert force. Through its de force diversion, it means that if a strong guard is in front of, is in front of a, strike, a striking zone, rather than trying to strike through the guard, Wing Chun grappling will simply use circular motion to actually divert the force away of the guard and instead open up the location that they need to strike. 
So if an attack is fired, the grappling serves to move the force away from them with as much softness and as little energy possible for them while making sure that their opponent is left immobilized and unfortunately unable to provide counterattack. A technique I'd actually like to make note of in this situation is that uh, the Qi Sao technique, otherwise known as sticking hands, Sticking hands is something that Wing Chun practitioners learn very early on in their career, but take much time to develop as it becomes, as it can become the most powerful counter-attacking method that they possess. It is swift flowing and can, and can apply continuous pressure on the opponent, as well as it can be very adaptable to many situations. The, re the reason why sticking hands is so impressive is because of the way that it continuously holds on to the opponent's, holds on to the opponent's firm stance. In fact, the special thing about sticking hands, more so to me than anything else, is the fact that is that while it works off of feeling the opponent and predicting their movement, it's not that you're actually holding them, but rather that you're rather that you're simply following their movements as fast as they make them. Moving on to Wing Chun's weapons, Wing Chun is not a heavily based weapon martial art, with actually only possessing two weapons that they formally train in. The two weapons that Wing Chun users formally train in more than anything else are the butterfly knives, which are actually two short swords, roughly shorter than the Tao, but still longer than the traditional knife, and the long pole. The butterfly knives are, da are the only original weapon of the Wing Chun system and focus on speed and precise cuts. Because the, this is a dual wielded weapon, most of the open hand techniques are actually well adapted over to it allowing it to be utilized very efficiently and quickly. Um, things, such, things, going, things going along with butterfly knives was seen to, can be seen to be swift and chaotic, much like an, ex much like an Eskrima practitioner. However, what's most interesting about the two styles in this regard is that they do follow very specific flows and they exist and many of their motions can actually confuse the opponent while making sure that they can pr strike precisely where they want to go. The other weapon of Wing Chun actually is their long pole. Their long pole roughly goes from anywhere from 8 feet to 13 feet. The long pole is interesting in that it, in that it was developed by the, the uh, Red Boat Opera House troupe as well as uh, the Shaolin Monk that taught them. Because of this, we can, we can tell it's an adapted form because instead of using um, the goat clamping stance, it utilizes the horse stance, which makes it firm and strong and provides much ground for distance. The seven principles of the long pole are actually quite interesting as they, as they are uproot, expand, shock, deflect, cut down, circle, and flow. To explain each of these principles um, shouldn't take too long so let's get into them right now. The principle of uproot means to destroy the opponent's base. Do not let your opponent keep firm. Strike their legs. Expand means to don't to allow the pole's length to increase and decrease at your need, meaning that thruster meaning that thrusting and sw and wide swings to a certain degree are more acceptable, as they do not allow your as they make your weapon seem even longer and larger than it really is. Shock is an important factor of this, as it means that even though if your opponent may possess a very strong guard, something that can be performed instead is attacks to locations. To set up a new f to set up a new strike, that would be that if your opponent might have a very strong guard against their head, but a very weak guard on their legs, striking the legs and then striking the head would provide for a very good shock cap capability. Uh, deflect is another element that is very important. It is one of the, it is one of Wing Chun's uh, it is one of Wing Chun's basic tenets as well, and works in the regard of move moving a force. This is very important for a weapon as long as this, as closing the distance is going to be instrumental. And with deflect, it provides both the ability to handle attacks that may be more forceful than this, as well as attacks that are simply aimed to just try and knock the tip out of the way. With deflect, it can be utilized to get it can be utilized to perform very strong defensive maneuvers and can maintain stance. Now, my favorite of these seven principles is cut down. Cut down is basically saying, the is saying to be decisive. Cut down means that while we utilizing this pole, you must be you must be decisive when you attack. That way that that way when you attack, your your motions must follow through through efficiently, 
and strike down your opponent without hesitation. Circle is an important element of this in that circle means to confuse your opponent. Do not allow your staff's tip to be read, otherwise your opponent can read where your staff will go before you actually, when you make the decision. Instead circle, confuse your opponent as well as build pressure. And the last tenant is flow. Be able to switch between all seven tenants of these as though they are one. That way it will allow for the strongest power to be released when needed. Getting into the final portion of this, let's talk about Wing Chun's famous practitioners. Our general famous practitioners include Wu Mui, uh, the, original, the original founder of Wing Chun and the developer of its movements, Yim Wing Chun, her first disciple, one of her first uh, female disciples as well as one of the sh as well as the person who has developed the style to what we've more seen it today Ip Man uh, a very famous strong kung fu expert uh, utilizing only uh, Wing Chun as his fighting style Bruce Lee a disciple of Ip Man who is known by many as one of the greatest martial artists who to ever live and Robert Downey Jr. who is known for many of his roles as Tony Stark um, who's known as for his roles as Tony Stark and Sherlock Holmes. And I can't forget uh, someone who we referenced consistently throughout this video, Donnie Yen. Donnie Yen has been uh, hailed as a very strong practitioner in Wing Chun, especially since he portrays uh, Ip Man in many of his movies, including his most recent one, Ip Man 3, which should have, produced, which should have been uh, aired January 22nd. 2016. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what y'all think. Let me know what martial art you would like to see me do next or even eventually. I have no problem taking suggestions. If you guys have anything you would like to hear about more or if there's anything you would like to see more of, please let me know down in the comments below. Please be sure to like, subscribe so you can see more of these and I promise the quality will get better as I go on. Thank y'all. Goodbye.